In this tutorial, we're going to create a surfboard using SolidWorks XShape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. Opening the surfboard start file, we first want to make sure we're designing with the correct units. Let's click the unit dropdown on the right side of the screen and make sure the units are set to M for meters. In the design manager to the left, we can see the surfboard start file includes three ordered geometrical sets, or OGSs. The first OGS contains reference images for the top and side view of our surfboard. The next OGS contains the fins, which have been designed already. And the empty OGS, called Board, is where we'll begin our design. Before we start designing, let's click on the Fins OGS to access the Hide command from the Context toolbar. Then double-click the Board OGS to activate it. We can now add a primitive shape from the Subdivision tab on the Action bar. Let's choose a box and place it on the origin marked by the X. We can adjust the number of segments we start with. Let's increase the number of Y segments to 7. In the dialog box, let's enable the mid-plane option to center the box on the origin, then enable the scale by bounding box option and turn on scale non-uniform. We can then set the X value to 0.5 meters, the Y value to 2, and the Z value to 0.03, and hit the green check to continue. We can use the orientation triad in the top right to view the side reference image head on. We can also turn on transparency in the top toolbar and set the slider to 50. Clicking the transparency icon again hides the slider. To reposition the entire surface, we can click and drag to box select all entities. Alternatively, we could use the Ctrl A keyboard shortcut. Making any selection activates the robot manipulator, which allows us to translate, rotate, and scale any selection. To translate the model downward, click the vertical arrow to expose the ruler. Clicking the number 0 allows us to input a precise distance. Note the arrows of the robot point in the positive direction, so we'll use a value of negative 0.05 meters to translate this down and hit the check. With our selection still active, we can click and drag the scale point at the end of the vertical arrow. Drag to scale the selection until the thickness of the board matches the image reference. Focusing on the front of the board, let's turn on Soft Selection. Soft Selection mode allows us to extend the influence of the robot to neighboring vertices. Let's box select the front cluster of vertices. Notice the colors applied to the neighboring vertices. In the dialog box, we can extend the influence by distance or number of faces away from our selection. In this case, we want to specify a distance of 0.75 meters by dragging the slider or typing in the value. Let's use the robot to drag the selection up by 0.1 meters. Note that you can hover over the ruler as you drag to snap to precise increments. With the same selection, we can translate inwards 0.1 meters. Now let's click and drag the arc on the robot to rotate the selection upwards by 10 degrees. Similar to translating, we can hover over the ruler to snap to precise increments. Let's use the robot once more to scale the tip down to match the reference image, then exit soft selection mode. Moving down the surfboard, Let's box select the adjacent loop of vertices and translate them down by 0.015 meters. Focusing on the rear of the surfboard shows a flat section in the image reference. To add this surface to our board, let's turn on the Cage and Surface view in the top toolbar. The Cage and Surface view exposes the mesh from which the sub-D surface is generated. Pan to the rear of the board to select one of the flat faces and choose Tangent Propagation from the Context Toolbar. 
Once again from the context toolbar, choose Crease Edges to add a sharp corner around our selection. We can switch back to the surface view from the top toolbar and return to the side view. Let's box select the rear group of vertices and translate them up by 0.03 meters. With the same selection, we can rotate counterclockwise by 40 degrees and then scale down. Clicking and dragging the wedge between the arrows allows us to translate freely in both directions. Let's box select the adjacent loop of vertices and translate up by 0.015 meters. With the same selection, we'll scale to match the image reference. Now that the side is complete, let's use the shift and arrow keys to rotate 90 degrees to the top view. Let's turn on symmetry from the action bar and select the YZ plane from either the design manager or the graphics area. A green edge loop appears along our plane of symmetry. We can also use the triad to return to a top view. To avoid overlapping faces as we sculpt, let's turn on the surface and cage view again from the top toolbar. Double-clicking this horizontal edge selects the entire loop. Let's click the vertical arrow of the robot and click the zero on the ruler to enter a value of negative 0.08 meters to translate down precisely. Using the same technique, let's translate the front corner of vertices down by 0.24 meters. Note that the arrow is pointing down so a positive value will suffice. We can sharpen the tip of the board using that technique once more. We'll translate with the horizontal arrow by negative 0.01 meters. We'll repeat this on the rear corner vertices, translating them down by 0.2 meters. Now it's time to align the rest of the vertices. Let's change back to the surface view from the top toolbar and box select the middle six edge groups of vertices. From the context toolbar, select Quick Align. This command aligns the selected vertices to a curve we can draw with our cursor. We have to be sure to start and end the curve where we want the front and rear groups of vertices to go respectively. The sculpting process is now complete and we can exit the subdivision environment by clicking the green check in the top toolbar. Notice that the subdivision surface is automatically knitted into a watertight, solid body. Subdivision surfaces can also be knitted by accessing the command from the context toolbar. To better view our final design, let's use the V key shortcut to show the view menu. We can hide and show several types of entities, but we only need to hide planes. We can press V again to remove the menu. In the Design Manager, let's click the Reference Image OGS and hide it from the Context Toolbar. We can then show the Fins OGS the same way. Our surfboard design is now complete. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.